बिलोंगेशन Many of you know him as the cartoonist Maxim, uh, who's uh, contributed to so many newspapers, talking about the situation in the country, whether it be uh, social prejudices or uh, political. But we also know him as a very renowned architect, one that has contributed so much for education and architecture in our country. He is none other than Dr. Shaukat Mahmood, and we will be in conversation with this eminent personality in this uh, episode of Sky is the Limit. Stay tuned. Welcome back you watching Sky's the limit I'm your host Umar Khalid but and now we've been joined by Dr Shaukat Mahmood a name to be reckoned with in so many different fields as I just told you in my introduction let's start with him from the very beginning Dr Sap first of all thank you very much to have joined us my pleasure you're on a short mm-hmm. trip to Islamabad I yes. know you you have to leave for Lahore so we'll try to keep it as quick as possible so uh, let's start from the very beginning uh, you were born in uh, Peshawar in Peshawar yes and uh, what was uh, that era like for you any uh, memory that you can recollect good or bad and what was your upbringing like well actually born in Peshawar but then i think i was just an infant when family migrated to gujarat right. in pakistan the memories which i have is about the making of pakistan i still remember that was the 27th of ramazan All right. When there was an announcement that Pakistan is going to be created, so I remember my elders. Uh, they hung a map of India by, and they were looking. This will be Pakistan. This will be Pakistan. This will be Pakistan. And then I remember the houses were burning, and uh, there was a lot of tyranny. The the dead bodies, burned dead bodies. I saw they are still fresh in my mind. Oh, it how old a, were you at that time? Seven. Okay. I was just seven. Born on 14th of August, 1940. Okay. So I was seven, and then uh, it was a very tragic event. I mean, um, other than what we say, independence, mm. and the which is which is also by name only. Now I realize it was a very tragic event. I still remember, and then the death of Gandhi. People were celebrating in Gujarat, mm-hmm. and uh, then in nineteen forty, forty-eight, forty-nine, we migrated to Lahore. my father was in income tax and he was in delhi at the time of partition and uh, the train by which he was coming to pakistan he was slaughtered uh, somewhere near jalandhar oh okay. so he didn't come back uh, for 5 6 months he, we were without without him and we thought he is gone but then after some time he one one day he appeared wandering in jungles and in deserts and walking on foot and so on The one incident I still remember is that when he joined in service again, he was in income tax department. Okay. When he joined again, his department asked him to go to how much salary he was getting in India, and along with him, many others were also asked the same question. And he used to tell us that when the report came to came from India after one year, nobody has quoted his salary wrong. Everybody has correct, totally stated correctly. what is salary but i mean there was no bungling there was no dishonesty mm-hmm. and nobody tried to get more salary than he was getting in india mm-hmm. so that was the time when people were honest and i think we were looking forward to a bright pakistan which unfortunately hasn't come and that that's a very sad aspect not only for pakistan but my myself also i we feel very sorry for this country but sir you came to of course let's uh, you uh, went to gujarat So you pursued your studies over there. Oh, I was in class one at that time, okay. or class two. So in, in, in Gujarat, did you guys stay for a long period of time, or did you uh, migrate from there to another city? No, as well? then I said, as, as I said, migrated to Lahore. All right. I had my primary education in a very small school in Lahore. Okay. Then, uh, after doing my matriculation, I joined Government College Lahore. Okay. Studied there for six years. Won um, gold medal for standing first in my MA examination, and I was. Uh, Awarded uh, role of honor, so 
Then, then, then after I joined UET as a teacher. But sir, uh, uh, you said you did your master's, you d had a gold medal in uh, the uh, fine arts department as well. But why join uh, the arts and how was your family's reaction like when you said I want to pursue the field of arts? Because was at that time uh, field of arts looked good upon? That, that's, that's interesting and that may be a turning point. I, perhaps it was a turning point in my family. In, in BA, my subjects were Persian and economics. And I wanted to join MA Economics, to be honest. Then when I went to the Punjab University to get an admission form, in the distance of the same building, I saw some beautiful uh, dupattas and shirts and so on. And I asked my cousin, what is that? And he said, this is fine art department. I said, OK, leave economics alone. I go there. OK. <laughs> so it was the dupattas that kind of uh, attracted you to go towards the fine arts department? I don't know why I joined fine arts. I never, when I was studying fine arts, I was also thinking, what will happen when I qualify? Because there, there are no job opportunities for painters or artists. So that was a bad time. But luckily, after doing a master in fine art and standing first, getting gold medal, I job, uh, got a job in Nanjian University as a teacher. All right. So then that was another change. And how long did you uh, work at the engineering university? Well, I joined Nanjian University in December 1962. And then uh, due to my gold medal, I got a scholarship, but it took a long time. In 76, I got the scholarship. I went to uh, Scotland and joined MSc in architectural conservation. When I finished with my architectural conservation, then uh, I asked my ministry in Pakistan to allow me to continue my studies for PhD. But sir, uh, why architectural conservation? I mean, you did fine arts. You, it, it, wasn't it a kind of a change to go from the fine arts to architectural conservation? Yeah, positively changed. But I joined, I got the job in Engine University to teach history of architecture. All right. Yes. And then another subject, which is perspective, and which is also related to architecture. So by teaching this history of fine arts, uh, they developed an interest in me about the buildings. I studied about the minimum pyramids. I studied about the ziggurats in Western Asia. I studied about the temples in India. I studied so many things. But sir, of course, uh, my uh, interesting uh, thought would be why go towards architecture when you had done masters in uh, fine arts? And what kind of zeal or interest were, did you have as far as studying uh, the architectural monuments was concerned? Actually, when I qualified in my MA Fine Arts, one of the subjects were there was the history of architecture. And other subject was the perspective. So on the basis of these two subjects, I got a job in a university. Okay. So when I started teaching history of architecture, I got interested in monuments like the pyramids of Egypt and the ziggurats of West Asia and the temples of India churches of France and England. So there grew inside me a, what should I say, zeal to learn more about these things. That's, that, that, is a, that took me toward architecture. So of course you do, you do your uh, MSc uh, from abroad, but then you pursue it and you do a PhD after that uh, as well. And uh, the PhD of course was in Islamic architecture. Yeah, but my first MSc was in architectural conservation. Hmm. And the, I had in my mind that after doing MSc in conservation, when I go back, since I will be the first Pakistani qualified in this subject, I will be given some responsible job. But here I realized that the mountebanks and quacks, they were ruling and they were spoiling the building in the name of conservation. I can name so many buildings which have been destroyed by these self-styled conservationists. I, I feel sorry for these build buildings because when I, when I talk about these buildings, I say I don't look at these buildings as buildings, I look at them as my children and I must take care of them. Unfortunately, I didn't get enough chance. After qualifying my MSc, I requested my government to let me go for PhD, which I am grateful for the government. Uh, so I continued my studies for Islamic architecture in Edinburgh, uh, which I qualified in three years. Dr. Shokat, you continued uh, after your MSc with a PhD, of course. Uh, further, how were those, those times at, at that moment over there? And uh, how did they consider somebody from Pakistan doing a PhD? Well, at that time, it was the area, I shouldn't say, let's say, 1976 to 1981, I was in Edinburgh. 
And I enjoyed very good time there. My wife was with me and she joined YWCA. She was um, busy there and I was busy, busy with my education. And we were, in Edinburgh there was a very small Pakistani community. Very well, well knit and very frank with each other. Very congenial atmosphere. Uh, I enjoyed full respect there and my, I still remember when I qualified, my supervisor, very famous person in history of architecture, Robert Hillenbrand, Brother, Dr. Hitler, Robert Hildenbrand, he said, Shaukut, you don't go back, go to Pakistan. You are not fit for Pakistan. But why, I was under a bond to come back, so I, so I returned. You were talking about your wife. How did you meet her? Was it an arranged marriage or was it love at first sight? Not love at first sight, but love after many sights. Okay. <laughs> I, I will put it like this. She was my class fellow. And uh, then, but it was a very different time, not a love affair of today. I mean, she was a burqa wearing uh, lady or girl. And on the, only in the class we were used to be together, but it was later then arranged by the parents. And how was it? I mean, where, what uh, were you doing when you got married? Had you finished with your studies? Had you finished with your masters at that time? I had finished with, of course, I had finished and with And you were teaching at the engineering university? I was teaching at the university. So we, when we got married and uh, I got the scholarship to go abroad, so she followed with two children. So you had already gotten two children by that time? We had a very tough time. I, 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 okay. I mean, two children and a wife, plus myself, and scholarship was very small. Okay. But when she got a job, then things got easier. All right. And um, I think we got to prosper. And the real prosperity was that I got an MSc and a PhD also. How was family life like? Was your wife supportive of uh, your, uh, of course, field? And how was it growing up uh, for, for your children in different environments, whether it be Pakistan or, of course, England? Well, I think I, she is a very religious lady, very religious, religious to the core, I should say. And even before marriage, she, she one day said that you should become a doctor. Okay. That means PhD, not the other doctor. So I thought maybe if the Allah gives me a chance, I will do that. But I also, I also remember one of her dialogues after the marriage. She said, Ke Shaukat na khud kabhi haram khana na bachon ko khilana. At that time, we had no bachas. But that is what she said, I still remember. Because uh, Sayyid by family she is. And, but she was very supportive when I was doing my PhD. Uh, she used to help me in facilities, looking after my drafts and seeing my drawings since she was also fine arts. And uh, then at the difficult times, she was, since, since, since she was also earning some money, that also helped me a lot. Dr. Shaukat, high achievers always sacrifice their personal life for their professional life. Was it the case in, uh, in, for you as well? Well, I think if you get committed to something, then uh, you are always sacrificing, some, sacrificing something. For example, now in, uh, in education, when I go to my office, I, normally 4 o'clock everybody goes home. I stay there with my students, teaching them, guiding them about their thesis and so on. And now my wife says, you are not married to me, you are married to your office. So the things have changed. But I think if you have to, <coughs> you have to gain something, mm. then you have to share also. And unless a teacher shares his ideas, his knowledge with students, it doesn't work. Did you share your ideas with your children as well? Uh, I have been sharing my ideas with my children, but uh, fortunately or unfortunately, none of them is a cartoonist or an educationist. But why so? I mean, there was the influence my, of the my father. My daughter is in Karachi. She is with the publishing house, looking up. She's an editor. All right. Uh, looking uh, English journal, and uh, my son did his uh, masters in electrical engineering from Maryland, okay. and then he was he did, he, he opened all the um, this McDonald shops in Lahore. Okay. He was responsible for doing that. Then he was transferred to the headquarters of McDonald's in Chicago. There he did his MBA from the Chicago School of Economics. Now he's in China. All right. And he's become the global resource manager of Walmart. So none of them is close to me in any way. But the, both of them say, son says that my, my career is due to my mother. Okay. And my daughter says my career is due to my father. 
So we are both hard on it. <laughs> so at least there's that little influence yes. of both parents. But while your children were uh, growing up, who was the stronger influence, you or uh, your wife? My wife. All right. Yeah. And of course, uh, changing environments, changing countries, changing cities. Uh, has that kind of uh, increased or I don't know, how would I put it, uh, brought more color in your life? Color, if you say in the sense of uh, education and knowledge, yes. That is important for me. But speaking of colors as colors as well, I mean, uh, we're of course going to talk about your work, but in your field of work, whether it be, of course, uh, related to architecture, education or uh, cartoons, how much of importance does uh, the field of color have on your uh, personality? Color, you mean, when you say color, is it the, the yellow, blue, red, etc., or you mean the variety in the life of the person? I, I talk in both senses. In both senses. Yes, color, um, I mean, color is when something which is, um, which is the basis of aesthetics, I should say. Okay. So if you have to do, if you have to dress up, if you have to make a painting, if you have to do a sculpture, you have to make a building, yeah. then the color and aesthetics count very much. That is so yes, true. Yes. And uh, uh, amongst your uh, teachers mm -hmm. who taught you when you were of course doing your master's and MSc and PhD, any particular teacher who has been a very strong influence? Well, there were quite a few teachers, particularly at MA level, Mr. Khalid Iqbal, very famous yes. landscape painter, he was my teacher. And in fact, he was, he's the one who pushed me toward cartoons. I am very grateful to him. And then uh, Mrs. Ahmed, she was a very nice teacher. Okay. Actually, she is the, the, the backbone of fine arts in Pakistan. Uh, without, uh, without her, I think fine arts would not have flourished that much as it has flourished today. So these two teachers really made an impact on me in fine arts. Apart from fine arts, of course, uh, there's one thing, Dr. Shokar, that I really find very odd. People still feel that uh, the field of fine arts is more of a hobby than a profession. Even uh, the field of media, whenever, for example, somebody asks me, okay, what's your job? I say, I work for television. No, all right, but then what well, else do you do? Well, yes, so you right. see, for, 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 for in the field of arts also, I've seen many people who say, all right, you do this, but what else do you do apart from that? Have you uh, undergone through this? Uh, this thing? is a very pertinent question, and I already said that when I was doing my MA Fine Arts, I was worried what, to, well, what I will do after applying, uh, qualifying. But at that time, Fine Arts was just painting, okay. or study of the history of painting, etc., etc. Now fine arts has uh, exploded into various branches. For example, there is a graphic arts, which is um, publicity and this thing, and the, the people flourishing in, the, in that. Photography is another. Then the media management, and, and your job is also part of fine arts now. So people are flourishing, and the things have totally changed in fine arts. That is true. And I hope that people's mentalities also change with some time and they consider this a more uh, fruitful profession as More well. They do. I think they should, people should start respecting it. Mm. Previously, people used to look at the fine art, oh, it's the painter, what is your real profession? Exactly. But it, then, uh, now it's, it's a totally change. Now it's totally changed. Dr. Shokar, any particular hobbies? Oh, well, not really, but I used to play cricket in school days and for sometime in the college days. But my, I think my real hobby is to listen to old songs. All right, any particular song that like, you like? Like, um, I listen to Pankaj Malik or okay. K.L. Sagal okay. or K.C. Day uh -huh. or like the, um, then the old songs of Lata Mangeshkar, old songs of Noor Jahan. Okay. I really like them. And then even older than these people like uh, Zora Bai Oh, Zora I mean Bhai that Bhai. era. Because yes. I was very small when uh -huh. these people were singing songs, I was very small. And my father used to bring those discs from Delhi, uh -huh. and we had that um, gramophone with the um, what is it, spring rotated things, and we used to listen those records on this. And then once it brought a pickup, that pickup would produce the sound from the radio, Ooh. and then the, our mahalla people would come and listen to the songs. Oh, that's nice. So that was uh, that's a great nostalgia, great nostalgia. Well, of course, nostalgia is something that stays with us forever, that has stayed with uh, Dr. Shokat Mahmood as well. We're in conversation with Dr. Shokat Mahmood. We'll continue after this short break. Stay with us.